Welcome to worship here at Fair Oaks United Methodist Church. We are glad you're here every week. Whether you stop in and just watch Children's Moment or you stay for the sermon, we're glad that you take the time to be here with us as we say, God loves you and so do we. We extend a special welcome to those who are single, married, divorced, poly, gay, trans, queer, straight, cis, filthy rich, dirt poor, live in a mansion, or are sleeping outside right now. Yo no habla inglés. We welcome you if your family has been here since the Mayflower, or you just got here last week without papers. We extend a special welcome to those who have just rolled out of bed and are watching in their pajamas. Or have worn your Sunday best and especially those who got lost on social media and wound up here by mistake. We welcome those who are in recovery or are still addicted. You are welcome here if you help protect and serve or just got out of jail. We don't care if you're more religious than the Pope or just starting out on your religious journey. You are welcome here if you believe following Jesus is only one of many paths to spiritual enlightenment. We welcome those who think the earth is flat, those who can't spell and those with multiple degrees. We offer a special welcome to those who have been harmed by organized religion and those who had religion shoved down their throats as a kid and those who could especially use a prayer right now. We welcome everyone every day, every day with open, open hearts, hearts, open minds, and open, open doors. doors. Good morning. Welcome to worship at Fair Oaks United Methodist Church. I'm Julie Strachty and I'd like to lead you in music today. Please join me in singing Over My Head. join me in an attitude of prayer. Gracious God, we hold those who we've lost during this time. We hold those that are struggling with mental illness or mental fatigue, whether it's come on in the onset of coronavirus or it has been there before and is still a place of struggle. We hold those who feel weak and powerless we ask that they be made strong in your sight. With those with little faith, we ask that they just touch the hem of your cloak and be made strong again. Gracious God, we know that there are so many ways in which we fall short 
that we are not your people. And so gracious God, create a heart in us that's for you and you alone and all that you do. Amen. Hello, I'm Fraser. And I'm Estidra. We're here with another scripture from our Lent on the Go bag. It is Psalm chapter 46, verses 1 through 2. God is our refuge and strength. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains fall into the sea. Yes. Uh, so, uh, the first sign is God. We learned it a while ago, but uh, we should probably still go over it uh, for those who may have not watched that or just as a, a reminder. Mm -hmm. To those of you who did. Uh, so you put your hand up, your palms open, and then you bring it down. Like God's, uh, you said it was like God coming down from God heaven. coming down to you, yeah. Yeah, or you, you know, just, you know, bringing them down to you during prayer. Mm -hmm. Having know. that connection. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then our uh, is... Uh, so your hands like this, and you can do it with either one, but, uh, and you bring it in, like in a semicircle. Shoulder to shoulder, curves around. Yeah. Okay. And then refuge. Uh, so you have, you make both of your hands into fists, uh, bring one in front of the other, and then open the one which is in front of the, of this one, the one behind and then you kind of wave it around like a shield. That makes sense. Yeah. Look, so it's like refuge, yeah. shield, protection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then strength. So strength, you have your hands on your chest and then you bring it out. You know? It's like you're flexing. Yeah. You're strong. You're flexing. Yeah. Uh, and then therefore, uh, therefore is an interesting one, uh, but uh, I like it for other reasons. Um, so you have two index fingers like this. They can either be D's or P's or wherever you want. And then you bring them out like so. So they're in and then they're out. So. Think of it as because of this, these happen. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. Therefore, okay. Yeah. And then we is like our, but it's with a W. Okay, so our is just a cupped hand, and we you make the W. Okay. Yeah, and then will this is uh, will is uh, you have an open hand, and then you bring it out. Like so. It doesn't have to be that extreme, okay. but we, we're just doing it for your benefit. And then not, uh, this is not as in like negating uh, something. So for instance, it would be will not. So it's almost like this is one movement then. Yeah, yeah. Will not. Yeah, okay. yeah. It, it, this is also uh, how a lot of other people do not. For instance, you would go like, no way. Mm -hmm. So it just makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and then fear. We did fear last week, mm -hmm. and I kind of view this uh, verse, these verses, mm -hmm. it's a few I believe, mm -hmm. as the continuation of the one we did last week. Mm -hmm. uh, literally, you know, the context may not support that, but it's just why I believe, and I think it's kind of nice. They're both talking about trusting in God yeah, and trust, relying on God. Yeah, so, even yeah. through fear mm -hmm. and all that. And the first one's a question, whereas this one's an answer. Mm -hmm. That's so, true. Yeah. So fear is you're like this, so it's, yes. yeah, this, and then like you're, you're scared, you mm -hmm. know. The, the fear. And then earth, we chose to do earth as in ground as opposed to earth as in the planet. Uh, so um, this is how
how you do earth as in ground is you kind of is you're kind of like pinching the dirt. You're kind of like sifting through your fingers. Think of how you do it if you've ever gone to the beach and you pick up sand and you do Let it. Let it fall through. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then remove, and this is remove as in destroy. And so this sign is really nice, and I feel like it tells a story, mm -hmm. uh, kind of. So your hands are open like this, and then you bring it up, you make them both into fists, and then you take it down. You know. It's like you're removing something. And yeah. The earth be removed. You remove that earth from under yeah. your feet. Okay. And then the mountains. Mountain, we learned rock. Mm -hmm. I believe we learned it last week. Yes. And so it's this. This, and then back to back. Yeah. And then you use these hands, and it's, it's kind of shaking out the side of the mountain. So it's a mountain made of rock. It's like you're, you're drawing a mountain in the air, and it's yeah. a rock mountain. And then fall, fall, and this is not as in the season fall, uh, which, it, although the signs are similar, mm -hmm. uh, this is in the action. So you're, you start from the more so the top, and then you bring it down. And then into, and into, make sure you do it with your full hand, because if you do it with F, that's Bodhi. And if you twist it, it's tea. Like tea you drink? Yeah, tea you drink. That makes sense. Okay, but we're doing N2. Yeah, N2 and then C. And C, I believe, is a similar sign to waves. So... Kind of a fun one. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like mountains. Yeah. And see, they kind of go together. Okay. Yeah. All right. This is long. Lots of new signs. Y'all ready to try it together? Okay. Here we go. Let's go slow. God uh, is our refuge and strength. Therefore, we will not. Fear. Oh, I did that backwards. <laughs> we will not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains fall into the sea. I like that one. That's that's a lot of. It's very fluid. Yeah. Okay. But it is long and I messed up fear. So, all right, let's try it one more time. Yeah. Everybody ready? God is our refuge and strength. strength. Therefore, we will not, will not fear, fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains fall into the sea. I like that one. That was worth learning all those new signs for. Yeah. Very good. Okay. And I, I've got some new, I don't know if they're favorites, but they're in the top 10. Mountain, I like that. And sea, they're kind of, they're so similar. So those, those go in my top 10. But, my number one sign, I love you. true.
Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a Our scripture reading today is Matthew chapter 9, verses 18 through 26. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned, and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout that district. God bless the reading of this holy word. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of each of our hearts be with you, beautiful and gracious God. Amen. I love the woman who approaches Jesus and she just says, if I just touch your cloak, I'm going to be healed. She has such faith that she just knows I wonder for how long has this woman traveled and with this affliction being so bad, it's not just that she was uncomfortable, it's that she would be isolated in society. Women of this time, if they were menstruating, would be kept in a separate tent as to not contaminate the rest of the household. You may have read a book or seen a book by the title, The Red Tent. It's the conversation of what takes place in the tent as women ha have synced in their cycles and have this time away this time to be with just other women, to hear the stories of the older, wiser ones, for the young ones who are just coming in to this uh, time and their experience of being taught by the older women. But this woman has been bleeding for years. We don't know of her condition, but we know that that caused her not only again to be set apart, but to be separate, to be on the liminal space of what this society was doing. She wasn't able to participate in the festivals. She wasn't able to participate even in cooking food, walking to the well and talking with her neighbors as she got water. She was outside of everything that was taking place. And she's well enough to walk. So we have to imagine that she is not in such pain that she is bedridden. So she is literally on the outside looking in at all that is happening. This is always who Jesus comes and who always who he heals. Her faith must have been so strong that she was risk willing to risk being ostracized once again. She was not supposed to be there. She was in public, of course. But Jesus takes the time and he knows that her faith, because she needs this so bad in order to re-enter into society, her faith is also, to me, sounds a bit like desperation. She needed 
herself to be healed by him. I imagine the talk that she gave herself of this man who had been walking around and heard rumors of healing, of how she had to conceive of what it meant or, and the plan she would have to devise in order to get there. And, and the crowds are growing at this point. How would she get close enough? I wonder if she dares to whisper, if you just get close enough to touch him, just reach out. She reaches for the cloak and he feels it. She's hoping that this, this instant, that she will be able to be restored into community. There's so many of us who feel like whatever reason, we are not able to be apart. It may not be a physical thing that separates us. It may not be a physical deformity or, or a health issue or, or something in that respect, but it may be a part of our heart that feels like we could not possibly allow this to be seen by everyone. Because if everyone knew, we would no longer be allowed to be apart. And so this brokenness is a part of us and we keep it hidden. And Jesus is there saying, if you believe you are healed, you are. The brokenness that you feel isn't a true barrier for you to be on the outside. It's one that society has created, and it's one in which society can change. Before, many people were put in institutions for things that now they're able to be fully integrated into society. It's one in which it allows people to be a part of, to live much fuller lives. That we're able to understand the idiosyncrasies and the differences of each other and fully accept them. I once pastored a church and we had a large plays band that was very loud. We had a kid who had special needs and before his medication kicked in, he was quite a handful for folks, including his mom. His mom needed that hour. She needed that hour to not be in charge of him. And at one point, I could hear him over this 10-person praise brand yelling and kicking the concrete wall. And I got really nervous in that moment. I began to think of all of the things that people were going to say to this mom and this child because she had gotten to the point where she knew she couldn't take him out in public anymore. And as the folks turned and looked, as he donkey punched, donkey kicked the wall, I thought, oh, here it goes. Here it goes. They finally got him to go to Sunday school, and we had the gift of having two gifted and loving people who knew how to work with children. The other kids were staring as well because they knew that this was not acceptable behavior. And not only would they not be allowed to do it, no one should be kicking a wall in church. But these two gifted youth people also just said, hey, buddy, can you tell us what it's like in your body when things like that are happening? And he was able to explain what his body feels like when he is not in control of it and how he doesn't feel okay until his medication kicks in. And then with tears streaming down his face, he explained to these other kids that he felt so different so isolated and so alone that no one would ever be his friend. The beautiful thing about the kids, as soon as they heard it and they went, oh, okay, they were able to accept him and love him and have him be one a part of them. The second part of this truth about this little boy is he was incredibly gifted. He was a computer whiz and could actually hack into almost any system that was out there and because of his ADHD, could barely resist the impulse to do such. His future, if he were able to be guided and molded into the right way of being integrated into society, I know for sure big things and good things are ahead of him. We would have missed out on that moment if we would have just seen him as a problem. If we would have told her this is not what we're here for and we are not part of a place where you can bring troubled youth. Actually, we don't have very many kids here and you're actually frightening the kids that we do. 
It's how we choose to welcome people in that says more about us than it does about them. In the next coming months, we are gonna have opportunities to welcome people through this door. We are going to have the privilege of some of us being vaccinated and some of us not. We are going to be in the ethical conundrum of how do we be the body of Christ? Over this last year, that shifted. It used to mean these buildings meant when the body of Christ had gathered. Well, now we know that the body of Christ is in some ways dismembered. It's in different places and in different spots, in places we never thought it would be, in our gardens and on our walks, and also in places in which are new, in front of our TVs with maybe little altars, with homemade communion set out and before it. Before it. So how will we come back? How will we welcome those on the liminal space? How will we be the body of Christ? And how will we be healed by just being in the presence of God? I hope that these questions you treasure in your heart and answer for yourself. Amen. part of our congregation at Fair Oaks. We are grateful for the ways in which you continue to show up, you continue to give, you continue to be present. We give thanks for you and for all that you are, just as you are. Thank you. you